Hello, hello, this is Maya Kana, and I am a psychic who specializes in twin flame connections. And in today's Q&A video, I am going to finally answer the question, what is the difference between a relationship and a divine soul union? And thank you to the person who submitted this question to me. This is a very important question in the Twin Flame community, and this is a question that I feel very, very passionate about, um, as it really is the core mission of all Twin Flames to usher in a new, higher blueprint to replace the prevailing blueprint for relationships on the planet. And Twin Flames are here, above all else, to model divine union. If we don't know what we are aiming for, it's pretty difficult to achieve it. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about, you know, the difference between a relationship and a divine soul union. And when I'm talking about the difference between a relationship and a divine soul union, this isn't really like the difference between, you know, apples and oranges. This is like the difference between apples being a relationship and then like the essence of the tree that created the apples being like divine soul union. So these are actually two really different things. Sometimes in the twin flame community, people just throw around the term relationship interchangeably with divine union and I will admit I have been guilty of this too because we're just so used to talking about relationships and trying to reach people who are who are in that mindset of relationships but actually these two things are really different so at its very very core if we want to start sort of at the beginning a relationship is <laughs> the coming together of two people. You know, you can have a relationship with, now of course we're mostly talking about romantic relationships here, but you can have a relationship with anyone, right? It's usually the coming together of two people for a purpose. Like usually we go into a relationship for some sort of selfish purpose, whether that be you know, or not selfish, but self-directed, you know, whether that be because we, we just, we want a marriage partner, maybe because we want to be safe or secure because we want to have children, or maybe it's a friendship relationship that we, we go into because of a shared interest, or many different reasons, but relationships are usually an earthly creation for a purpose that somehow benefits us. And it's really based on, you see, relationships are birthed from the paradigm of separation. How do we know this? Well, it's right in the word itself. It's the Relationships are about relating. And relating is based on a premise that we are different. So if you're relating to something, it's because that you see that thing as being separate from yourself. And you're asking, how can I relate to this thing? Or in this case, how can I as a person relate to this person who's different than me? How can we come together in a relationship? And when, you know, one thing that, that often comes up in the twin flame community is, you know, we, we kind of giggle at relationship advice and say it doesn't work for twin flames. Why doesn't it work? Well, because twin flames can't have a relationship. I mean, twin flames literally can't have a relationship because twin flames are not separate. Relationships are based on the paradigm of separation, on relating to something that's different from yourself. So, so advice that's based on relating to something that's different than yourself will not work for twin flames because your twin flame is you. <laughs> okay, so that's where we begin. So if that's a relationship, if a relationship is about two people coming together or relating together for... Um, a shared purpose, or sometimes even when with relationships, it's the different people are getting something different out of it, different purposes, but that are that are somehow benefiting the perceived self, right? Okay, so that's a relationship. So what the heck is a divine union? Well, <laughs> a divine union is the coming together of a soul, the returning back to oneness. Divine union is not based in the paradigm of separation. Divine union is based in the paradigm of oneness. 
divine union is based on one, it's, it's not related to the earthly plane, okay? So relationships are an earthly creation. Divine union is created by God or creator or source or whatever your word is for that energy. But divine unions are the based in the recognition that all is one. That this soul, first of all, to have a divine union, you, you, you need to come from the understanding that you are not a person, that your personality, your personhood is temporary, and it has nothing to do with who you are. It's a vehicle that allows you to be on earth, but it has nothing to do with who you are, who you really are, okay? So divine unions are a union of a soul. It's a union of a soul. But in twin flame, in the case of twin flames, who, who really form the most pristine divine unions, it is the reunification of two aspects of the same soul essence. It is the coming together, and I'm going to talk about this more in a moment, but it is the coming together of the divine masculine and divine feminine. It is not the coming together of a man and woman. It is the coming together of the divine masculine with the divine feminine. The return to wholeness. The return to oneness. The embodiment of the return to oneness. Like when a relationship happens on earth, you know, when a relationship happens, when two people relate, you know, I like to think that maybe some little energy is moved in the higher realms, okay? There's something. There's an acknowledgement from spirit. Okay, well, this person crossed paths with this person, and maybe their guides say, okay, yeah, they're in contact. When a divine union <laughs> happens, I like to think that in the higher realms that the light is expanded exponentially. You can imagine giant fireworks. You can imagine a huge expansion of the physical light quotient in the universe. Divine unions are very, very powerful. Relationships are a dime a dozen. Divine unions are, at least at this time in Earth's history, an extremely rare phenomenon. Okay, <laughs> so relationships are based generally on the relating of the body and mind the relating of the body and mind. It's, you know, two bodies interacting or two minds interacting, talking, figuring each other out. The a divine union does not start on that level. Like a relationship usually starts on the body-mind level. And maybe if it's an amazing relationship, eventually works its way up to the soul level. A divine union is exactly the opposite. A, you cannot pick a random person on the street and say, let's make a divine union. Divine unions are chosen by the divine. They're chosen by spirit. They start in the higher realms. They start at the beginning of time. You know, it, the beginning, the initial moment of creation. When we went from a oneness, one energy into these different energies that are now different souls, the way, you know, the, the, the aspects of the same energy or similar energy that represents our soul, the, those are the beings with whom we can form divine union. We can come back into oneness, okay? So, um, the divine union is not about appeasing our body and minds. It is about transcending that level. It is about the oneness of the soul. It is about creating something more, expanding the energy of the pure energy of oneness, of God, of creator, of source on the planet and directing that energy for a higher purpose, to make the planet more like heaven. Divine unions are have the potential to create heaven on earth. Relationships mostly, um, they create other things. <laughs> okay, I ha the relationships, you know, they might, they might enhance the paradigm of separation um, or worse, okay? But they're not about creating heaven on earth. 
Relationships now, they have served a purpose on earth, but relationships are usually about survival. Okay? Divine unions are, you don't, <laughs> divine unions are about, you know, if anything, on a human level, it's death because the divine union will kill your separate aspects. The divine union will probably first kill your personality and ego before you merge back into oneness. So it's, it's not about reinforcing the societal mechanisms of separation. It is about... It is about erasing, transmuting separation altogether, divine union. Um, there are not a lot of people in divine union at this time, but, but all twin flames are meant to come into divine union. So a relationship, so, so if you've met your twin flame, you might be thinking, oh, I really want a relationship with my twin flame. And that sort of, Desire usually will not be fulfilled because we are not supposed to have a relationship with our twin flame. That's not going to fulfill the twin flame mission of creating heaven on earth. So you want to shift your focus into divine union. I want to have a divine union with my twin flame. We are all, we all, all of the twin flames, we, none of us signed up for the relationship path. Okay, we all signed up for the path to divine union. So if you're trying to walk the path of relationships, you're going to walk probably off the cliff. And some people have already walked off the cliff. The good thing is you can just transcend the cliff altogether. You can still get into your divine union so long as you, so long as you put the focus there. But it is a, you know, to come together in divine union requires us to fully embody our soul selves. You know, to be a soul on this, to, to know that we're a soul, to embody our soul essence, and to harmonize, to move beyond the illusion of separation, and to come into almost like it, when we're really in divine union with our twin flame, and, and as many wonderful twin flame teachers have pointed out, this is something that usually happens incrementally. So we can be sort of, you know, at one stage of union with our twin flame, and we can always rise higher, higher, higher. So it's never like, you know what, I'm in union, I arrived. No, 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 that does not exist. You can just keep going, 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 going. Once you're in the higher realms, you know, once you're in the highest places in, in heaven and you're in union, then fine, then you made it. But so long as we're here, we can, we can rise higher, rise higher, rise higher, rise higher. Higher, higher, higher into union. But the energy of union, the, the relationship is one plus one equals two. The relationship exists in the matrix. And even, you know, soul connections, even soulmates and stuff are usually having a relationship, which is fine. It's fine. So, but it's one plus one equals two. You know, it's one person coming together with another person, and then there's two people together. That's interesting that there's something there you know and the relationship is a creative force on the planet that has created many things and many 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 people as well you know most of us wouldn't be here if not for the relationship of our parents but a divine union the reason why it is incredible is because it completely defies this entire realm of material reality that we're we are on and it can shift and change material reality and make things possible that are not quote unquote possible. So so the math for divine union is not one plus one equals two. The math for divine union is one plus one equals infinity. So but it's more of like an equation like this. In a divine union, you've got two people. You've got one and a one. One plus one who come together. But when it's a divine union, the one plus one, first they come together in their recognition for oneness. So what, they, what you essentially have is like a one plus one equals one first. There's this acknowledgement, okay, I'm not actually a, an individual one. I'm, I'm one part of the one, and I'm one part of the one. And so then when we come together, we get more of the one. So one plus one equals one. But then the realization as you move deeper into union, that oneness, we realize, okay, we, we are part of that oneness. So is everything around us. 
So therefore, our oneness is actually, it's actually nothing. It, we are actually the void itself. We are actually the same consciousness uh, that is nothing and everything at the same time. So it's almost like one plus one equals one, which equals zero. And then once you get to that zero point of realizing that we are sparks of this divine, the same sparks that represent all of creation and the void. We are essentially everything and nothing. We are zero. Then it's exactly that. We are everything and nothing. We are nothing and everything. And that's how we get one plus one equals infinity. Because once you reach that zero point where you release that perception, that one, that one knit, that one identity of being a single unit, once you release that identity of being a single individual, you then have access to everything. You then, when you recognize that spark, when both of you recognize and really learn to become that spark of the divine, when you become that and you lose that set paradigm of separation, you become zero, you gain everything. You gain infinity. So in a divine union, the one plus one equals infinity. Okay, it's totally not, like I said at the very beginning, the relationship is like the apple and the divine union is like the essence of the tree that created the apple. The divine union is a life-giving force. It's an essence of a living force that is generative, that generates. The relationship is something else. Okay, I'm not going to talk at length about what a relationship is because that's irrelevant to most of us. You don't even, you don't, if you are trying to understand relationships, just stop trying because you're not even, that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're supposed to become a divine union with your twin slave. You are supposed to harmonize your entire being to the energy of divine union. And the question of what is divine union, in my mind, is not a question that has a full answer yet. I believe that we are meant to carve out this answer. We are meant to figure it out as we go. As a lot of people say, there is no book that will tell you how to come into union with your twin flame that will give you all the answers. There's a lot that try, but none of them can get you there. You have to figure it out on your own, and it's sort of the same way with defining divine union. You have to figure out what that means. Um, but what I can say for sure is that divine union is based in this premise of the coming together of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. A typical relationship is like a man and a woman coming together or a woman and a woman or a woman and a man or sometimes like a woman, a man, and another woman, etc. right? But it's based on that. It's based on that's the idea of a relationship. But a divine union is the coming together of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which could be, those polarities could be in two women, two men, a woman and a man, or, you know, but they could be in anyone. But it's the coming together of that divine masculine energy, the yang energy, and the divine feminine energy, the yin energy. It, it, it's, this is something that I wish, I wish that I was a physicist, but I'm not. But I know that if I was a physicist, there's, this is science. This is actually a scientific concept here. This is about alchemy. There's an alchemical reaction when an exact sort of masculine polarity energy meets an exact feminine polarity energy. There's a magnetism that can happen. There's a merge back into oneness. And there's a reaction that can actually transform those two energies in a relationship, you may have a divine masculine and a divine feminine. But there is, like, if you could look at what was happening, um, and I believe this will be possible sometime before I die, but if you could look at what's happening on an auric level, on an energetic level, what you would see is you'd probably see a divine masculine right next to a divine feminine. In a relationship, maybe they can't merge together because they're not one being or because they're not at that their, their energy fields are not activated in a way that would allow a merger. But in a divine union, what you see, what you could see, what you would see if you saw it, 
I believe, would be you would see a, a physical representation of the masculine energy, physical representation of the feminine energy coming together, becoming one energy, and then having an alchemical reaction that transformed it into a, another energy altogether that was actually a life-giving, a generative life force giving force that would not only transform itself but transform everything around it all the particles molecules whatever that were around it that's what i believe you would see if you could see it from a scientific standpoint so it's very different like there's relationships everywhere if you open your eyes look out the window you'll see a ton of people in relationships but to see a divine union is to see something truly miraculous, okay? Something very, very, very special. And we should all take into account and consideration the fact that if we're on this twin flame path, we, we have this alchemical power within us for transformation and transmutation and to become a generative force of the divine, right? And that's, that's the mission, you know? We talk about our individual missions, and yeah, we have them, but the biggest mission is to embody this energy of divine union and to, to first figure it out on our own, to come into divine union with our twin flame, um, and then to help others do the same. Because this relationship thing that's, that's been going on on earth for a long time is, you know, it's media, it's, it's in the end game you know it's not really working anymore and it's going to be as the vibration of the planet actually rises we need a different form of partnership we need higher partnerships and we are meant to usher in those those forms of partnerships and to model true love and to become in the energy of divine union i said at the very beginning the relationships are about sort of service to self the divine union is about service to all so the divine union has that generative energy and that's the energy that we that's the energy that makes huge global missions possible because when we get into union with our twin flame it just keeps giving us more and more and more and more it becomes infinity we become infinity and we just have an unlimited amount of energy potential that we can tap into and we are meant to not just you know, sit with that, although that is just wonderful, but we are meant to give it to the world. We're meant to give it back to the world, to reinstate oneness on the planet. That's what divine union is all about. So I'm just, I'm going to stop right there. If you're more interested in this topic and you want to go in depth, then, you know, visit my website in two years when Zaire and I are traveling all over teaching people how to come into divine union. But for now, that's all that I'm going to say. Um, if anybody has any questions that they think would benefit the Twin Flame community at large that you think I would be able to answer, please email those to me at mayasbrightstarcreations at gmail.com. And thank you so much for listening and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Namaste.